also mean that there will also be high potential in Austria to, to grow. <coughs> Another way to look about the development potential, and very often I'm, I'm asked by investors, um, uh, how long do you think this, this catch-up process uh, that we will see in countries of Central Eastern Europe, how long will this take? Now, obviously, it's very difficult to really say, okay, it will take 20.5 years or 15.1 or something like this. But what we try to do is here to just look at, and we cluster the countries like Poland, Czech, and Slovak Republic, for example, and compare it. When did we have the indicators that these markets are having now? When did we have the same values in Austria? Because that could give us some sort of an idea of how long it was. And you can see that currently, as I said, the average of Poland, Czech, and Slovak Republic, which is the most advanced uh, countries in the area in this respect, uh, they are currently where Austria was somewhere in the early 80s. So I think this is an enormous potential, and I don't want to talk about, uh, about uh, Romania, Bulgaria, or Serbia, which is somewhere in the 1970s. Um, and the interesting thing is also that despite all what was written about doomsday in Central Eastern Europe during the crisis, about what goes down the drain in Eastern Europe, with the financial services in Eastern Europe. You all know these messages. Um, we just looked at the growth of the markets compared to Austria in crisis time. So when obviously Central Eastern Europe was such a bad place to be. Now, when you take Austria as one, as a development between 2006 and 2013, uh, Poland has grown 45% more than Austria in this period. Slovakia 52%, more. Czech Republic 35%. The only, the only Central Eastern European country which underperformed was surprise, surprise, Hungary. Yeah. And I guess we all know why. But I think this is a, a very strong, a very strong message why we are in CE and why we believe because there is not only potential, it's materialized. It's going on. Um, insurance is something which is always an accessory, which means if you don't buy a car, you probably don't need motor insurance. And if you don't have a house, you don't need homeowner insurance. So first comes whatever you have, and then comes insurance. It's like this. And therefore, for insurance, obviously, it's very important how does the general economy developed. What are the prospects? Now, if I look into what are the prospects according to the most reputated international uh, institutions uh, making uh, projections and prognosis for the future, we can clearly see that for most Central Eastern European countries, uh, the arrows go upwards or where they should. For example, in inflation, they go downwards. And the crucial point here is that every Green arrow means better than last year. So following green arrows means always better than last year. Um, for us, this is a strong, again also, a strong support for our belief that we are working in the right region. And what is even more so, we simply know not only that the prospects after crisis will be better, again, but we also know that they will be definitely better than in Western Europe. It's like uh, uh, what they say in an English uh, proverb. <coughs> we might not be the best, but we are better than the rest. Yeah? Uh, and I think that's the important point. Yeah? We might not see necessarily, again, high double-digit growth rates, but we will see definitely higher growth rates than what you could achieve, for example, in Western Europe. Now, let me just allow me, because we just had our general meeting uh, last Friday, uh, to give you just a few uh, words about our performance uh, in 2013, which was a very difficult year for our company, and, uh, and also what, how we do in the first quarter. Uh, we had overall a sound operating performance, uh, roughly 570 million euros, very strong capitalized, uh, and that gave us uh, the reason why we proposed in the general meeting adopted uh, this uh, proposal uh, to increase our dividends to a record 1.3 euros per share and, and which we are particularly proud of, through all the cycle, 
Standard & Poor's kept our rating uh, at uh, an A+. Plus. And I think it's interesting to see what Standard & Poor's was writing about us and why we got that rating. First of all, and very importantly, uh, the capital position EIG has is actually a triple A, according to the Standard & Poor's capital model. However, because simply of the countries in which we are working and which we call home, and because of the country rating of these countries, we don't have a AAA but an A+. That's the only one we see. But from a capital strengths position here, we would be a AAA. We have, obviously, as they say, a very conservative investment strategy. We have a comprehensive reinsurance coverage, which is becoming more and more important to think about the, uh, the uh, natural catastrophes which are now coming in more frequently, how important reinsurance is in order to protect your balance sheet. And overall, they say, we will stay in a very strong competitive position in Austria and in a leading market position in Central Eastern Europe. That's the reason for Standard & Poor's, why they are rating us so well. How did we do in the first quarter 2014? Um, we have a fantastic message. Actually, first time since crisis, all our markets, and this is the nice thing about this, uh, this green, green color, uh, green colored countries, um, all our markets that we are consolidating in our balance sheet show in 2014 first quarter positive results. Even and also Romania. Some of you might know that Romania is not necessarily a market which we performed very well in recent years. So the more we are happy that uh, there seems to be a positive development. I think I, I love this map. Um, to summarize shortly about what that means in, in real terms, we have all, as I said, segments and markets and profits. On a like for like, we have a premium growth of uh, roughly 3%. Um, like for like means uh, adjusted for uh, currency uh, fluctuations. We have a combined ratio of 96.4 in the group, in the group, which also means because we're not still there in Poland, we are working on that, but it also means in order to achieve the long-term goal or the mid-term goal of the group to oscillate around 95, there's still work to be done also here in Poland. Um, our profits did grow like for like again by 2.8% to 152 million, and we have a net uh, return on equity, which is roughly 190 basis points in excess of our average weighted cost of capital. That's an excellent value, and I have obviously to admit this is not only due to our brilliant results, but also to, due to the fact that capital has become cheaper. But nonetheless, it is, uh, I think, a very good, uh, a very good achievement. Now, as we are an insurance company. <coughs> Figures and, and a business entity. Figures are important. This is why shareholders give us money uh, in order for us to operate. This is why 23,000 people are working for generating a value added through a year. However, we are, as an insurance company, basically here in order to provide a basic need or for a basic need of uh, each and every human being, which is security. So basically, uh, this kind of very basic need is embedded as our, as the, as the raison d'être, if I may say, so as the reason for why we are existing into our, into our corporate uh, genes. And in such a situation, obviously, I think insurance companies are particularly called also to think not only in terms of business terms, but also in terms of a broader perspective. Some call it corporate social responsibility. But I do believe when it comes to insurance, it's not just a marketing brochure where you show what you're doing nicely for the community, but it, it is part of your, it's part of your genes. And um, one, of the, one of the actions we have initiated a couple of years ago, I think is illustrating this best, and I want just to shortly introduce this to you. It's an issue which we call social active care. What does it mean? Uh, we have decided that each and every employee working for us is getting one day off if he, she is using this day to do some community work, 
we do some social work. Okay. Uh, last year, roughly four and a half thousand people did participate in this social active day, which means it's more than half of those people who are working in the administration. We have dedicated 36,000 working hours for social services. Currently, 19 of our 25 countries are participating in these actions, and these are 31 companies. Now, what are they doing? We just listed a few examples what they were doing. They were, for example, in Georgia, they were building uh, a playground for children. In Hungary, for example, they are doing a lot of work for uh, Ill, chronically ill children, for enabling them to have some holidays and helping them uh, to enjoy these holidays. Uh, renovation work at an orphanage in, in Serbia, or even we also did here in Warsaw, for example, excursions with children from <coughs> children's homes. This is just a few examples. Uh, the good thing about it is that it is an initiative, obviously, uh, we did make it possible as a company, but the whole initiative is carried by our employees. Not the company is going to the orphanage. Not the company is building uh, a children's playground. Not the company is making these courses. It's our employees. And what we can see is that these people also, after this, are supporting the social institutions. And I think this is a, a fantastic, a fantastic uh, example of how an initiative that a company can do basically then is carried on by, by its people. I want to end my presentation on VIG with this. I think it's a good end in this respect. And I would hand over to Franz to tell you more about basically the Polish and his achievements in, in the last uh, almost 11 years here in Poland. Uh, before then, Arthur will tell you how it makes everything better. Thank you very much. Thank you.